Now the next property of the laser light is its high degree of monochromaticity. Now what is monochromaticity or what is a monochromatic source? Any source that emits radiations of single frequency or single wavelength that is called as monochromatic source and the light is said to be monochromatic light. But in actual practice such kind of sources are not possible to construct. That is the sources that emits that emit only single frequency radiations they aren't possible to be constructed in real life. So no such sources exist in real life. Now even the laser is also not perfectly monochromatic source. So if the laser, if the light coming from a source has only one frequency of oscillation, the light is said to be monochromatic and the source is called as monochromatic source. But in actual practice, it is not possible to produce light with only one frequency or you can say absolute monochromatic light is not possible and also in the case of laser, in the case of laser also perfectly monochromatic light is not possible. So what is the kind of radiation which is emitted from such sources also in the case of laser. So there is one frequency where intensity of the light is maximum. So laser as well as some ordinary sources of light. So all these sources of light they emit some frequency. They emit photons of certain frequency which have highest intensity. And there are also some photons present whose frequency is greater than this frequency as well as whose frequency is less than this frequency. So in all these sources there is a single frequency where intensity is maximum and this is called as the central frequency. Now in addition to this central frequency photons there are other photons which are emitted in all these sources so their frequency is either greater than this central frequency or less than this central frequency. So this is the diagram of intensity versus the frequency of the radiations which are emitted from any source. It can be laser, it can be any ordinary light source. So you can see that at this frequency nu naught the intensity of the light is maximum means more number of photons they are emitted at this frequency. But as you increase the frequency you will see that higher frequency photons they are their number is less as well as the lower frequency photons that is the frequency is less than nu naught so such photons they have less intensity. But only at this frequency the largest number of photons are emitted so their intensity is highest. But you will see, you can see over here that this source, this diagram of the source which we have drawn, you can clearly see that it is not monochromatic. It is not perfectly monochromatic as there is not a single frequency which is emitted but there are range of frequencies of photons which are emitted from such sources. So there is no source on this earth that we have constructed which is perfectly monochromatic. So the photons which are emitted from these sources their frequencies lie in a particular range. And how do we define this range? So light coming out from any source consists of a band of frequencies. So we have band of frequencies closely spaced around the central frequency nu naught. So these frequencies these are closely spaced around the central frequency nu naught. Now this band of frequency this is called as line width. So how do we measure this delta nu? So delta nu is the band of frequencies which are closely spaced around the central frequency nu naught. So this is the quantity which we call as line width or we also call it as bandwidth or also the frequency spread. So how do we measure this delta nu? So delta nu is the difference in the frequencies. Now over here this is the maximum intensity 
which is emitted from a source and the intensity is given by I0 divided I0 and there will be some point on this axis of intensity where intensity will be half of the maximum. So we will mark a point where intensity is I0 divided by 2. So at this point the intensity is half of its maximum value. So over here if you will draw a horizontal line and you will draw a horizontal line on the other side also, you will get two frequencies. So you will get one frequency over here and one frequency over here. That is at half of the maximum intensity you will get two frequencies and when you will do the difference of these two frequencies that will give you delta nu and this is called as line width or bandwidth or frequency spread so we say that the frequency from a source this frequency it lies between nu zero and nu zero plus delta nu divided by two. Now what is this whole length? This whole length is equal to delta nu. So what will be this length? This will be just delta nu divided by two and this will be equal to delta nu divided by two. So this point will be equal to nu naught plus delta nu divided by two and this will be nu naught minus delta nu divided by two. So here from this diagram we define delta nu which will give us the band of frequencies and this will give us the range in which the frequency is lying from a particular source. So this will give us the range in which the frequency is lying. So the range in which the frequency is lying for the case of a particular source. So that will be between nu naught plus delta nu divided by 2 and nu naught minus delta nu divided by 2 because this whole length this whole length is equal to delta nu and this central point is nu naught. So this length will be equal to delta nu divided by 2 and this length will also be equal to delta nu divided by 2. So this point will be nu naught plus delta nu divided by 2 and this point will be nu naught minus delta nu divided by 2. So we say that the frequency for this source, so for any source for which we have drawn this diagram, intensity versus frequency. So for this particular source, the frequency of the radiations which are emitted from this source, the frequency lies between this value nu naught minus delta nu divided by 2 and nu naught plus delta nu divided by 2. So this delta nu is nothing but the line width or the frequency spread and this is defined at half of the maximum intensity. So if you know the maximum intensity you do its half and corresponding values of frequencies when you will subtract these two frequency values that will give you the line width. Now degree of non-monochromaticity is defined in the case of any light source. So we define a degree of non-monochromaticity of a wave. So degree of non-monochromaticity is defined as the ratio of line width to that of the central frequency. So delta nu divided by nu naught is defined as the degree of non-monochromaticity. So this nu naught is the central frequency of the light beam. So you can see that if this delta nu is equal to 0. So if this delta nu, if this band of frequency is 0 means that only one frequency photons are emitted from a source. So if this delta nu becomes 0, if this delta nu becomes 0 means that nu naught, the photons which are emitted from this source, they have only one frequency which is nu naught. So if delta nu is 0, then monochromaticity, monochromaticity will be, the source will be perfectly monochromatic. So if delta nu is 0, if this becomes 0, the source is perfectly monochromatic. 
or you can say degree of non monochromaticity will be equal to 0 so if this delta nu is equal to 0 then degree of non monochromaticity will be equal to 0 or you can say the source will be perfectly monochromatic but this thing as we have already said that a perfect monochromatic source is not possible to construct so absolute monochromaticity that is delta nu is equal to 0 is an unattainable goal and laser light has high degree of monochromaticity as compared to the ordinary sources of light the laser light has high degree of monochromaticity or you can say very less very less degree of non monochromaticity so the laser light has high degree of monochromaticity or very less degree of non monochromaticity so laser light has very less degree of non monochromaticity if this quantity is very less for the case of laser means this delta nu is very less for the case of laser light. So the line width for the case of laser light is very less as compared to that of other ordinary sources of light. So for example if you take some ordinary source. So for the case of ordinary source at lambda is equal to 6000 Armstrong. So for an ordinary source of light which emits photons of wavelength this much or frequency equal to 5 into 10 power of 14 hertz so if you take some ordinary source of light which is emitting photons of this much frequency or this much wavelength the line width for that source is found out to be 10 power 10 hertz so this delta nu for the case of ordinary source of light is about 10 power 10 hertz but for the case of a well stabilized laser the delta nu is approximately 500 hertz so the line width for the case of laser is 500 hertz for a typical laser it is 500 hertz and for the case of ordinary source it is 10 power 10 hertz so this delta nu line width for the case of ordinary source is very large as compared to that of laser means the degree of non monochromaticity for the case of ordinary source is very large or degree of monochromaticity for ordinary source of light is very less as compared to that of a laser so laser light is highly monochromatic as compared to ordinary sources of light. So over here I have shown the intensity versus frequency diagram for the case of a laser and for the case of ordinary source of light. So you can clearly see that in the case of laser the photons which are emitted the frequencies of the photons they lie in a very small range. Whereas for the case of ordinary source of light, a wide range frequency photons are emitted in the case of ordinary source of light. So for the case of laser, if this is, if you will call the maximum intensity as ILO for the case of laser and for the case of ordinary source, if you call it as IOO. So this is the maximum intensity for the case of ordinary source and this is the maximum intensity for the case of laser so for the case of laser if you will mark the half of the maximum frequency so it will come at some this point so you will find the difference in frequency at this point and for the case of ordinary source if you will mark the half of the maximum intensity so maximum intensity is over here for the case of ordinate source so if you will mark the half of the maximum intensity so you will see that for the case of ordinary source the band width is very large and for the case of laser this line width or band width this is very less so even for poor quality solid state laser so if you will take a very poor quality solid state laser so for that laser you will get delta nu is equal to 10 power 9 hertz as we have seen in the previous on the previous page that for the case of ordinary source this delta nu is 10 power 10 hertz for for lambda is equal to 6000 armstrong so for that delta nu was 10 power 10 hertz and for a very poor quality solid state laser this delta nu is 10 power 9 hertz now line width for the case of 
ruby crystal so if you will take a ruby crystal and the light which is emitted from a ruby crystal so that light will have a line width of 3 angstroms whereas if you will construct a laser from this ruby crystal so if you will construct a laser from this ruby crystal then the line width or the delta lambda for the case of a ruby laser is 5 into 10 power minus 4 angstrom so if you will take a normal ruby crystal and if you observe the light which is emitted from this ruby crystal so if you will energize this ruby crystal and if you make light to be emitted from this crystal so the light which will be emitted it will have delta lambda is equal to 3 angstrom whereas if you will use this ruby crystal in the form of a laser if you will use it in a laser then the light which is emitted from that laser will have delta lambda is equal to 5 into 10 power minus 4 angstrom so the line width is very small in the case of a laser so laser beam is approximately monochromatic in nature on the other hand light emitted by the ordinary source is highly non monochromatic so you can clearly see that the line width for the case of ordinary sources of light is very large so the ordinary sources of light are highly non monochromatic whereas the laser beam is approximately monochromatic in the next lecture we will discuss about coherence so we will discuss that the light from a laser is highly coherent and in the case of ordinary light sources the light is incoherent